Hola amigos, welcome to Life and Living Well channel. Please subscribe to keep the channel going. You can also check us out by visiting our website on www.lifeandlivingwell.com. Sit down and enjoy the helpful topic for this week. Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of Life and Living Well. My name is Richard and the topic I have for you today, I call it vanity. But before I dive in, into the podcast for this week, I would like to say if you would like to know more about our upcoming event and what we do as a community, you can check us out on our website at www.lifeforlivingwell.com If you decided to send me an email or you wanted to reach me directly, you can also send your email to hello at lifeforlivingwell.com So, let's get started. So, the topic this week is going to be brief or it's going to be deep as as always and if you have any question or your opinion about it you can also drop off you know regarding this particular podcast this way so once again welcome back to life for living well my name is richard let's get started vanity how the how do they describe or define in Webster dictionary? He put it down to something that have no values, so call it like valueless or just emptiness. The question is, why do we do it? Almost everyone of us entertain or are developing some kind of vanity, you know. And the, tr- the particular podcast this way focus on when we take this thing to an extreme, how it handicaps our own personal development and also affecting us in our own personal life. And the area that we don't normally focus on as a vanity. So I hope by the time you sit through this podcast, might be able to take one or two things from it. So why do we embrace vanity so much? We live in the world that creates so many meanings. We have multiple subcultures in the world that are also embedded in some vanity. Sometimes it can be so obvious and grandiosity. Most of the time, it can be very subtle. And I don't know, at one point, you might have met uh, one or few people that they declare themselves like statement like, I can never run. So the vanity this kind of person has in themselves is called self talk that they base their facts based on their own opinion about themselves, opinion about the events that happen in their life. Someone once said to me a long time ago, uh, she's a friend, I said, she never wrong. So, 
It was the first time I actually met someone that said that to me. And I looked at her and I said, maybe you mean not all the time. She said, no, she means 100% that she never wrong. So what now happened that when you now wrong and you pointed that person to their own contribution to what happened, they flip the script and blame the other person why they make it wrong. So they're unable to take responsibility, they're unable to accept condemnation of their behavior. Why? Because their vanity is self grandiosity in themselves. And this is a, this is a very trap area for narcissistic traits. So narcissism brought on from excessive self-esteem that you have a need to be feel good about yourself to the point that you over inflating yourself that if anything goes wrong it's somebody else's fault so these are vanity because we believe that we hold about ourselves we never be tested it and if we never if you have to accept the truth and reality, you can never know. So this is one area of balancing that you would meet in kind of people that if you're lucky enough, they might be able to say it in a public or social, social environment. And another set of people, these are the people that I call closest vanity. Their vain way of seeking is not something that they express in overt way like this. It's more covert way, and they they do it in the closet. Only people that live with these kind of people or work with them or have the opportunity to be in a close environment that are able to see this kind of vanity. Our pain can also show itself in the material thing or accolade or status that we chase. Say, for example, even from child, they are vanity or uh, playing games. So, children observe, are obsessed about their games, about their activities, that they just focus on that alone. And, uh, and they enjoy doing that but adults spend a lot of their energy to discourage them but if you take a step back and you watch the adult themselves they also create a different kind of games in their own world but the difference between the games they play and the kids is because they are, most of their games is the thing that provide the food on their tables their job, their work, their hobbies and when they, and the same thing the game did for the kids, it did for them. Their focus and their attention is absolutely taken away the moment they are in their work. And that is their own game. But they spend their time to minimize children not overplay. Play. And this is a vanity at the same time. So, most people are taking their vanity to another level where they over-parentize of status and the image and the accolade that they don't get and they just keep thriving in the expense of what is more important to them. They wanted to have a family, they set out to find a partner and they build the family and they gradually they destroy it by themselves and one day they realize that they become a stranger in the empire that they create for themselves this is a vanity you also see some few vanity out there there are people decided that oh our neighbor have a big house we needed to go and buy a big house and they bought 
ten rooms have a countryside home or by in the affluent area, but they never actually stay there. So they spend 90% of their time a year in hiking or sleeping uh, in camping. Is it not better to just have a motor home? This is a vanity. And you have someone who have so many rooms, let's say five or seven rooms in their house, but they just like to sleep on their sofa. You also see some people that they have a lot of shoes, but they like to walk with just one shoe. Or sometimes in an extreme situation, they walk with their bare foot. You have someone have uh, different kind of food at home. They just bought it in case they, there's no food anymore in the supermarket. So their neurotic and their fear and anxiety push them to want them to plan for their own planting. And they have so many foods in there. But they end up eating warm food at the same time all the time. And these are vanity as well. So the question is, what is the vanity that you have in your life? That it has come to the point that is eroding you to live life that you wanted to live. Are you kind of person that you wait for the validation from the other people? So it is impossible for you to speak your truth. So you wanted to please them and you tolerate bad behavior to the extent that you have so many resentment in you for too long, which is end up hurting you at the same time. This is a vanity. So, is your vanity is actually handicapping your own life and you living your life. The worst vanity, to bring this podcast to the end this way, the worst vanity I have seen and observe under the sun is the people that have so much anger and unreleased on, 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 on emotions like resentment toward the person that hurt them and at the end they hurt themselves more than the, what that person actually did to them so it's like somebody hurt you and you eat the poison so they can be hurt and it's you that is going to get hurt this is the worst vanity that I've seen I've I've read and I've seen people that spend a lot of their time to amass a lot of work and suddenly they just left it. And I've read uh, on the newspaper a few years ago by a lady that have a da- one daughter and by the time she passed her way away, she left it for her cow on her farm she claimed that her daughter has never been there for her and this is vanity so how does your vanity affect your life does it stop you to live a meaningful life does it stop you to live the life you want to live as you listen to this podcast this week begin to question your own vanity don't pretend, don't say you don't have vanity. Even belong to a particular group that look reflecting good on you. What did you gain from it? What happened if you don't longer belong to that group? How did you feel? You feel normal. You feel like you're complete without any external thing to you. So, like this topic said, we all have one brain thing to another. How we calculate to eat or how we calculate things to be and if all those things does not there how does we affect does it so affect us that we can't live life anymore so this is the challenge for you this way question your own vanity how does it affect you to live a meaningful life how does it affect you to live well so the purpose of the community is to engineer us to live a well life. And what is well life? Is to live through our own truthfulness and our own intentional way how we want to live our life. 
So I hope this particular podcast helps someone. And I will, uh, uh, if you like to write to me, you can send your email to hello at lifeforlivingwell.com. Once again, my name is Richard. Have an amazing week and please stay safe. Bye. Thank you. Hasta luego. From everyone here, from life, for living well, we say hasta luego, amigos. Thank you for your time this week. May your rest of the week be safe and loving. Please subscribe to our channel to keep it going. And you can find more information on our website by visiting www.lifeforlivingwell.com. Goodbye.